Welcome to the sixth, six, wow, six, unbelievable, sixth exhibition of stupidity. Now this is where we take a collection of articles, items, objects that have been sent to me or I have found and I dissect them for our amusement. Now when I was compiling the list for this and all the articles put together compiling it, I realised I had quite a lot of stupid to go through. So if this is a bit long, I do apologise, but there has been a lot of stupid in the world this month. So let's dive right in with this. Surrey County Council have fat shamed a statue of Homer Simpson. <laughs> okay, not really. They've actually ordered a barber to simply remove the statue because it may obstruct other people, certainly those on those mobility scooters that own the path, which doesn't seem to make much sense when you look at the picture and notice how big the path is. Mm, I thought they might be a bit more concerned with the lack of disabled access on that doorway there. But no, as a Surrey native, we have to fat shame statues. They've even suggested getting a slimmer version, because of course they've seen The Simpsons. I like this statue so much, I'm not going to pin the article to my corkboard, I'm instead going to put that statue there. Perfect. Thank you, Surrey Council. You should you should be on that board, I guess. Not the article. I'll put you there too. Next. Okay, so we have two tweets here from Salon.com. One from 2013. Muslims don't need to apologize for these czar knaves. I don't know how to pronounce that name, I apologize. And then one in 2015. White America must answer for the Charleston Church Massacre. What I find fascinating here is that you believe it is one rule for one group and another rule for a different group. Now, just to be clear, I firmly believe that the individual is responsible for their choices. Where they derive their moral code from is another. Let's not forget that both of these instances involve the lone person that were motivated by extremist ideals taken from faith. Not all Muslims are terrorists, and not all white people are supremacists. Another thing to remember here is that Dylan Roof, the suspect in the church shooting, has yet to have his trial, and you are jumping at the opportunity to push an agenda aimed at white people solely to guilt them for this individual's actions. Final thing to remember, it would not be a good idea to equate a faith or part of it with an entire race, as that leads people to believe that Islam is a race and not incompatible with democratic ideals faith. You can be any race and a member of a religious organisation. Now for a small contribution segment. As I mentioned earlier, there was a lot to go through, and I got bogged down with this month's batch of dumps, so I requested the help from two of my favourite content creators. So here now is Stacey King and Squeaky the First. Please subscribe to them both, they are both awesome. Hello! For those of you unaware of who I am, I am the person who is currently stalking you. But before I hack you to pieces and serve your body parts to nursery children, a la a cross between Jared Fugel and Sweeney Todd, I've ordered help Omega with some content because he is a lazy bastard. But now it is time for the exhibition of stupidity, and I cast my gaze to none other than the state of Utah, which according to 56.com has the rainbow trout as its national fish. About four months ago, Utah proposed a bill in which pornography was, and I quote, public health hazard. Now I don't know if this bill was implemented, but the fact that it was proposed in the first place on such ludicrous grounds at that makes it worthy to go in this video. The general description, as provided on the proposal itself, goes as follows. Quote, this concurrent resolution of the legislature and the governor recognises that pornography is a public health hazard leading to a broad spectrum of individual and public health impacts and societal harms. It also says pornography is an epidemic that is sweeping the nation and for something must be done to combat this beast or so God help us all. Pornography apparently caters to a se sexually toxic environment, implying that an effort to ban the act of filming and distributing sex does not. It also talks about porn pornography addiction, which may be a problem but it isn't a reason to ban the practice entirely. It says that it contributes to the to a society of the hypersexualization of teens and even pu 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 pubescent children. G good arguments, guys. Due to pe pesky advances of technology, people are now able to watch people fucking easier than ever before. Hardcore pornography is now considered mainstream, which has no nothing to do with changing attitudes with, with sex within the last few decades. Average age of exposure to pornography is now 11 to 12, which means the sexual species take interest in sex, especially at the point of puberty, was a travesty. Yeah, I, I see why people say America has such, such education policy. With bills like this, who needs puritanism? It also mentions that it will result in problematic, problematic and risky sexual behaviour, with no specification, naturally. It mentions that it becomes a template for sex education. Given that a bill is being passed in a state about how bad it is for 12-year-olds to watch porn, I get the feeling that people running a state must be pretty clueless. Do you think, guys, I think I'm causing your own problems here? Hold on, I've got a great quote here. 
quote, because pornography treats women as objects and commodities for the viewer's use, it teaches girls that they're to be used, used and boys to be users. That would, of course, ignore gay porn at all. But gosh, looks like you've got some misogynistic views, thinking women are objects. Make <laughs> objects. It also says that makes the rape and abuse of ch child trafficking seem harmless. You know, people know what a fantasy is, right? You know it isn't real. Right, right. Thank God you aren't running a section of the most powerful country in the world. Oh, fuck. Reading this thing is like reading some Islamic speaker who would say stuff about sex. No, I'm not going to commit yet too far. See, no, I won't. Yet. Fuck off. Waffling nonsense about the lack of intelligence, how it will make sex crimes more frequent. This is despite, of course, in the same pattern of video games, not increasing violence. Sex crimes have decreased through time, while access to sinful wank material has only increased. I know that correlation, causation, things like that, but it's it's doesn't help their case, is what I'm saying. But viewing this has, made, has truly been a magical day. Stupidity is even more fun when it is at a government level and thus can have a negative effect on the population at a larger scale than a YouTube video. But this has been Squeaky the First, you can be the first, and Omegan is the worst. So Omegan gave me equality's a bitch if you're one, the article. Let's start from the top. Why women need to start asking men out? Let's play the guessing game. Is it A? because we're no longer weak, gentle flowers to be plucked and conquered, b because confident women are sexy, or c because we're finally living in a gender equal world where it doesn't matter who asks who out as long as two people who love each other get together. I'll give you a second to think about it. If you picked any of those, what were you thinking? This is a feminist article! Consistency does not exist in the world of feminism! The real answer is, because men have no balls. Now let's get stuck in this article. Ladies, it's been said before, but I'll say it again. They just don't make them like they used to. There's no door holding, no hand holding, and definitely no free drinks. There's no taking off hats and courting through invitations. There's no smooth moves, no jackets to dinner. There are no flowers, no tables by candlelight. But most importantly, there are no dates. If you're a single woman, you probably envisioned your 20s as a roaring social scene full of expensive dinners and lavish nights out. You probably thought you'd have a boyfriend or at least a few dates a week. Just gonna interject here. How offensive is it that she's reinforcing all those toxic masculinity and harmful treating women like children stereotypes? Holding your hand and the door? What are you, a toddler? Also, courting coming from an unwanted intender is now by law considered harassment in some parts of the world, and since men haven't acquired the power of mind reading, I'm pretty sure the good ones you're crying about, dear Lauren Martin, are not going to put you through such a traumatic experience. Going to be serious for a second here. She goes on to talk about how today's men are scared of women. They'll never admit it, but you scare the hell out of them. After years of social conditioning, we've been duped into thinking that men are the strong ones, that they are the leaders, the protectors, and the fighters, that they are the ones that see what they want and go after it. What about men's social conditioning. Aren't you aware that it's been drilled into their head almost since birth how girls are their equals and how they should respect them and let them lead and treat them no differently than their male friends? How is it possible to ask for a strong protector provider when feminism has spent the past few decades strangling him, cutting him up in many tiny little pieces, burning the pieces, then burying the ashes six feet under and dancing on the grave? Also, how are women not scary? The slightest amount of unwanted attention is harassment. Drunk or regretted sex is rape. Women have the sole control of reproduction. And then you go to wonder why men are reluctant to associate with women? Now her second point about mama's boys is the part that really pisses me off. Why are men like this? Well, for years, they've been raised by their mamas, the women who told them they were the best thing God created on this earth. Do you mean all the boys raised by single moms, making them the center of their little universe, with no male role models in their life? Are you saying that maybe that's not the best idea when it comes to raising men? 
that it makes them pussies? Wait, weren't dedicated single moms the best thing since sliced bread? I'm confused. How does one have this much cognitive dissonance and manage to function on a basic human level is beyond me. And finally, we get to the conclusion of this masterpiece of an article, and it's glorious. It oozes of irony and complete lack of self-awareness. Listen to this. They never grew up. In a sad but not all that surprising report by Nickelodeon UK, men are 11 years behind women in maturity. While women reach maturation by 32, men aren't fully matured until 43. While this study generated much attention, women everywhere were less than surprised. Didn't we already know this? To add insult to the few dates you have yet to be asked on, men are also getting married less than ever before. According to a study by Pew Research Center, only 26% of Generation Y is married, compared to 48% of our parents at this age. There's no denying that men just don't have their shit together. This coming from the entitled little shit that spent the whole article whining about how she doesn't get asked out on dates and shitting on men without for a second stepping back and looking at the bigger picture, or god forbid, do a bit of self-reflection. Men don't marry not because they're immature. They don't marry because women have become whiny self-centered bitches that don't really know what they want. Not all men, not all women. Generalizations are useful when you're analyzing a bigger picture, so don't go spamming on Megon's comments about how I generalize too much. Also, that drop in marriage she's talking about, maybe it has to do with the fact that divorce is a bitch, especially to men. So, yeah. Anyways, moving on. Women drags a dead dog through a London street after it collapses during its morning walk and then tries to leave its body behind when shocked onlookers challenge her. Not much to say about this one, except some people are horrible, horrible human beings. Your dog is dead or dying and all you do is keep dragging? How much of a soulless asshole do you have to be to even consider something like that? And then just abandoning the body? You need to be abandoned in the crater of a volcano, lady. Moral of the story? When wondering what kind of person you want to be, be the opposite of this dog owner. Moving on to another tweet, this time from the ever edgy Onion. Christina gets shot and you all prayed for her. One, if your god cared, she would not have been shot and two, you prayed, she still died. Wake up. It is a truly sad thing what happened to Miss Grimmie, and what you did was take her passing as an excuse to rail on those of faith. You do realize you can only get away with being edgy for so long before people realize you are old enough to be considered a grumpy old man that needs to be institutionalized. Personally, I do not care what someone believes in as long as they don't try to force feed it down my throat. I do find it fascinating that you need to tweet things out like this just to stay relevant with your teen girl fan base. You deserved the backlash for this, and I'm not surprised you got eventually a little bit cowardly and decided to protect your tweets. Yeah, also I got blocked. I can't imagine why. Onion, you are an attention-seeking, beta-cucked, middle-aged emo fagbag that needs to face up to reality that you will more than likely be placed in a padded cell within the next five years. Next we have Gorka. I'm going to start by reading a tweet. Congratulations to the unexceptional men who took a vibrant company that a lot of people worked hard to build and flew it into the ground. Unexceptional? Are you kidding me? Hulkamania can't be stopped. I mean, look at this guy. Look at him. He'll need that $140 million just to buy all the t-shirts he'll be ripping off for the next hundred years. Nick Denton is to blame for Gorka filing for bankruptcy. Nick Denton is to blame for ignoring repeated warnings to remove that video. Nick Denton is to blame for invading and ruining a lot of people's lives. Look at the guy who paid for Hogan's legal fees. Yeah, Denton messed with him and look where that has gotten him. Maybe a lot of people did work hard to build Gorka, but the buck stops with Nick and his disgusting practices. He should be who you are complaining about, not those that took legal action, rightly so, against Gorka. May Hulkamania run wild over Gorka for many generations to come. Next, we have a tweet from Sarah Silverman. If, if Reels Before Feels was about, he'd be berating me for making a This Week in Twitter ripoff. 
Now, while he hasn't been active in a while, you should go subscribe to him anyway. Link is on the screen now. So Sarah Silverman tweeted, Please remember, ISIS may be Muslim, but not all Muslims are ISIS. All serial killers are white guys, but not all white guys are serial killers. And this is where I have to correct you. Now, I can see why so many people hate you. This is Moses Sithole. This is Carl Eugene Watts. This is a list of non-white serial killers and this is a study that basically shows serial killer percentages by decade and was very recently updated. Would you look at that? Those with the darker hues, the epidermis appear to have a higher percentage. This is very interesting when you consider the percentage of black Americans and then look at the numbers in crime. Sarah, you have a talent for being a moron that no person should be proud of. You were once a comedian I respected. Now I regard you as a desperate troll that needs to stop stirring up trouble by promoting such lies. These studies prove that there are serial killers from another race, and you, along with the media, need to stop promoting white serial killers and then only promoting police shootings of black people. It is getting a bit stupid now. Do you all remember last year's Happy Father's Day mum thing? Yeah. Well, it's made a comeback this year with this t-shirt. It's her day. As if comfort didn't do a bad enough job. Just to be clear, I get that some are not raised with a father. Some never know who their father is and some have been raised under remarkably difficult circumstances. But you don't need to take away from fathers who are there, who are role models, who are raising children on their own, just to give mothers another platform that they don't really need. You discriminate against them, fathers that is, and make them out to be non-existent. I just want to read a small piece of a relevant article, so bear with me a moment. Being a man is not something to be proud of in this day and age. From Sarah Silverman apologising to a woman who just gave birth for having a boy, to men getting kicked out of college just for being accused of rape, Team Phallus isn't very well looked upon. Apparently this disrespect also falls onto fathers. Hashtag End Father's Day may have been a hoax birth forth from the more that is 4chan, but despite that being fake, the sentiment is somewhat real. It's exhibited not just from a few angry tweets and hordes of SJW Tumblr posts, but by corporations. Apparently last year Old Navy wasn't watching, as they've gone and made a very similar mistake to Comfort. Appearing in their store for a short time was a shirt that read, It's Father's Day, but look closely, it says, It's Her Day. I wanted to write about this not because I'm a male, but because the feminist trend of belittling men is not just insulting, it's dangerous. It's dangerous because sidelining fatherhood and making it all about women further promotes the idea that fathers aren't really needed. This is just stupid. Fathers aren't just good for families, they're integral. While there are many good single-parent households out there, those with fathers are just far and away better off. Fathers may not always be there for some, it does not mean you can simply take that designated day away and give it to mothers. Now give it time, I'm sure there'll be a few non-parents out there calling for this day too. Or Jess Phillips. Moving on to Serena Williams' nipples. Now I'm not sure if it's her nipples or the BBC that should be on this. But as the BBC are on this, I will go with Serena this time. So I like tennis, but there are aspects to it that put me off. Not one of them involves the BBC pausing and zooming in on Serena to the point where her nipples, the offensive items behind that sensor bar, are more visible. I personally blame Serena and Nike, to be honest. With the many millions, they couldn't spring for a better sports bra or one at all. I am, however, more perturbed in women's tennis, certainly, by the grunting. I know some guys find it attractive to hear Victoria Azarenka or Maria Sharapova make those sounds. But I do not find this... Hot. Now some of you will say, oh, Omegon, it's all about the nipple being over-sexualized and you're just abusing privilege. Not quite true. I'm more bothered that she and or Nike could not invest in something that would silence her grunts and stop her nipples from being the most prominent part of that match. So basically a silencer and a bloody sports bra. I would like to point out that I, a man, was not the only person that got a bit distracted by her bouncing nipular display. Women too were getting a bit annoyed, see the tweets. People get put off women's tennis with grunting enough as it is. Surely this does not help. This is not empowering, as it is just bouncy tits making the audience wonder if your boob will hit the ball before the racket or not. Now onto something a bit more light-hearted. For this, we will need a different, very different, visual aid. Perfect. So there I am. I sell a, I sell a foil Space Hulk Ascension card for a couple of pounds and realise I can make another Steam badge. Why not? So I do. And I get this voucher. Fantastic. Very happy. I'll go and get this little indie game. I look and notice it's 79 pence. Fantastic. I scroll down and notice 
so I could get it for 50% off or get four indie games for 55 pence. Do you like my ghastly Solkowitz? Yeah, for this we're going to need a drink. Perfect. Let's face it, it was either this ghastly Solkowitz or a wet mattress with the words fuck me in the ass written on it. I think for this we're all winners. So Miss Solkowitz received an award recently. This gave me the perfect opportunity to go and see what Sulky had been up to since falsifying a rape claim and carrying a mattress around. She was one of my very first videos and the first to hit 100 views, and I feel a certain responsibility to keep tabs on Muppets like her. Before we go into detail with what she has done since leaving college, perhaps a small refresher. While at college, she had sex with someone. She claimed they raped her. It was proven otherwise, and she decided to carry a mattress around, something about sharing or carrying the burden. Yeah, that was brave. She was told not to carry that mattress on stage at her graduation, and she has to spend the rest of her life knowing that she faked a rape claim and carried her fake evidence onto stage when she graduated. Congratulations. Oh, and before I forget, she also did a porno reenacting her fake rape. So now to the present. The National Organization for Women have given Emma Sokowitz a Courage Award. If there's ever a way to devalue your organization, it's giving a known liar an award for being brave. Because that's exactly what she is. She's brave for falsifying a rape and reinforcing the myth of rape culture. So now, which is dedicated to achieving equality for women, is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year. What a way to remember it. Solkowitz did what many rape victims cannot do. She channeled her fear into a public demonstration, built off a lie, and brought attention to her rapist's despicable act and highly inadequate punishment. Didn't do anything, she did not get raped. Shortly after receiving this award, Emma Solkowitz took to Instagram to share this and other things, where she writes, Olivia Solko caught me looking derpy with the Women of Courage Award. From my speech today, Camille Paglia has publicly called my artwork a masochistic exercise in which I neither evolve nor move on. She speaks as if she, a white woman, knew what was best for me, a woman of colour she's never met. Many people ask me how I've healed from my assault, as if healing were another word for forgetting about it. I'm not going to continue reading this because there are some interesting points raised that I think confirm Emma Solkowitz's place, ghastly Solkowitz's place, in the exhibition. Firstly, she was criticised by a fellow feminist. So what does she do? She immediately jumps on the only obvious difference, and that is race. Of course, since Emma Solkowitz's hair changes so much, it's very hard to tell what she was talking about when she said colour. Next, in the interview with Camille Paglia, Camille goes into detail about what she calls mattress feminism, and I'm going to quote this. I call it mattress feminism, perpetually lugging around your bad memories never evolving or moving on. It's like a parody of the worst aspect of that kind of grievance-oriented feminism. I called my feminism Amazon feminism or street smart feminism, where you remain vigilant, learn how to defend yourself, and take responsibility for the choices you make. If something bad happens, you learn from it. You become stronger and move on. But hauling a mattress around on campus? Columbia, one of the great Ivy League schools with a tremendous history of scholarship, utterly disgraced itself in how it handled that case. It enabled this protracted masochist exercise where a young woman trapped herself in her own bad memories and publicly labelled herself as a victim, which will now be her identity forever. This isn't feminism which should empower women, not cripple them. I'll let you be the judge as to whether or not she belongs here, and I might now stick Columbia University here too, because let's face it, they enabled this. Just before we move on, I want to read a little thing to you that I found on Instagram. Yes, I use Instagram, shoot me. This is the real rape culture against women. Emma Solkowitz has been proven to falsely accuse her rapist. She is still recognised as a rape victim and receives international support. I'm going to butcher this name, I'm so sorry. Bibi Wilhelm, a 16-year-old girl who was raped by Muslim migrant, challenges the pro-refugee status quo. She is censored and harassed. Tell me this, does rape culture help or harm real victims of rape? Certainly the feminist way of handling this rape culture. Just before we get to the penultimate piece, I have a message to pass along. Jess is a faggot from Fiffin. Next, this being the penultimate entry, it's going to be Barack Obama. Not for the economic growth over the last eight years, which has been zero, but instead supporting Black Lives Matter and also misleading the public with this statement. When, when people say black lives matter, that doesn't mean blue lives don't matter. It just means all lives matter. But right now, the big concern is the fact that the data shows black folks are more vulnerable to these kinds of incidents. Now let's see if those pesky blacks really have it worse.
Now the only way this works is if you balance it on the whole country population, which would be wrong. That said, it is also very inaccurate to perform any study on this level. The nation you have is far too big, there are too many demographics, which is fucking dumb, and too many people. However, by doing it your way, you have equated a single black person to so many white people. Yeah, this is not equality. I despise, quite frankly, all this race talk. I accept that in some places, race is a problem, but I do not like that it is a driving force in movements and cults. Now, I want to play a short clip of this lady basically saying what we should all think of race. We hate because we're taught to hate. We hate because we're ignorant. We are the product of ignorant people who have been taught an ignorant thing, which is that there are four or five different races. There are not four or five different races. There's only one race on the face of the earth. It's time to get over that. You know, I love how the Black Lives Matter movement has popped up repeatedly in the news, courtesy of a White House petition, people saying all lives is racist, claiming to not support cop killers, and then protesting and chanting to want the death of cops, all the while having a prominent member being a cop killer. I cannot get behind any movement that endorses violence and hatred of groups, movements, law enforcement, or even other races. Black Lives Matter, you are a disgusting bunch of fucks that need to fuck off to the annals of irrelevance. And dickheads like Obama and every libtarded regressive that supports you needs to go there, you fart-brained cunts. And our final piece is a reluctant one. It's those individuals those millennials that protest the EU referendum result when they had one of the worst turnouts for any age group. They blame the older generations, they blame it on level of intelligence, but they didn't turn up to vote. It's their fault for their own failing and their own understanding. I'm going to finish with this little clip. It's a, more of a compilation. Taken out of context, the first part with Jeremy Corbyn, but what he says is valid. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank all those that took part in an enormous democratic exercise in this country. The total number of votes cast in favour of Remain was 16,141,241. The total number of votes cast in favour of Leave was 17,410,742. It's a victory for ordinary people, decent people. It's a victory against the big merchant banks, against the big businesses and against big politics. And I'm proud of everybody that had the courage in the face of all the threats, everything they were told, they had the guts to stand up and do the right thing. because Nando's might close. If you to list your three favourite things about the EU, Holly, what would they be? They would be, well, <laughs> uh, definitely the NHS. That's what basically, it, like, for me, it's just about everyone being united together and I like, having the same opinion. Excuse me, young fellow, could you tell me, uh, you're holding an EU flag, what are your three favourite things about the EU? Uh, free travel. Freedom of education across Europe, anywhere I want. And the increased economy. The outcome of the referendum, and we want to do anything we can about it and come to make our voice heard, which it hasn't been so far. And what horrified you about it? Uh, the thought that we might leave the EU and the consequences that I don't think were public. 
publicised in any way. Well, we weren't listened to. <laughs> and what are the consequences? Well, the economy, uh, the rise in racism that I've seen in my local area, and um, well, with the unknowns that we face. Uh, so, as an EU fan, Amy, what would be the three best things about the UK staying in the EU? Uh, the stability. Oh, goodness, Georgia, help me out here. <laughs> Yeah, I know, but I think inside the EU it gives us more opportunity in terms of free movement. We can travel there very easily. We don't have the hassle that we have when we go to other countries outside. And I think it's better to be in something bigger than just Britain. Yeah, there's a lot to criticise the EU. But it doesn't mean that the people who invest in the EU are going to have more cuts to the public services, more crises. More taxes, more unemployment, more division, more races. It will be, it will increase races, it will bless, it will authorize races, it will condemn diversity. What makes you like the EU so much? Because I'm European. I'm French. I also live in Germany, so I feel like I'm a citizen of Europe before anything else. That's France fine. is already in Europe. This is for the United Kingdom. Yeah, but I live here, so it will impact me somehow. <laughs> <laughs> 